Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So as many of you guys know, I purchased the BMW E87 130i with the N52 engine. Now this one isn't like my other of two engines, which has got the magnesium valve cover. This one has the plastic valve cover, and this is the M52K engine. Now bearing in mind, this uses a completely different ECU to the other ones with the magnesium valve cover. That one uses MSV70, this one uses MSV80. Now bearing in mind it uses an MSV80, certain fault codes are not the same as they are in the MSV70 in there. These ones ain't as sensitive to problems as the MSV70 ones. And that being said, this car has an issue. The issue this car has, and I knew it when we actually bought it, because I haven't driven it much. My missus had been driving it, but when I actually drove it, I realized this car wasn't performing the way it should be. And obviously I started it straight away, stripping this car, because I wanted to find what the actual fault was. Now, when you actually scan this car, it come up with air mass system fault 2D09. Now, I know the valve cover had been changed, so it couldn't be a cracked valve cover. It couldn't be a leaking CCV because the CCV is built onto the valve cover, so that would all be new. Obviously, the blanking plug is still blanked off, so it can't be leaking pressure from there or any kind of air. The CCV pipe isn't brittle and broken, even though it was an old one that was reused, that pipe isn't brittle and broken. I actually trace the fault down to something else on this car. And I'm actually quite surprised that these didn't actually give the corrected fault code for them. It also didn't throw a check engine light, which was very odd. This one ended up being a shadow code, as I said, in the DME, showing air mass fault code. And I'm gonna be showing you why that was and what the fault was on this car. As many of you guys know, the owner who actually had this car, did a lot of work to it. Now I can't fault him because if it was his first M52, he's got nothing to compare it to. So he wouldn't know if the power was down or not down. Now what's actually happening is this car right now is actually running like many of you guys, 328XIs, 328Is, 528Is. And the reason for that is very, very simple, which I'm gonna show you right now. God damn, get it done with you. When the blow up now, everybody's so unusual with it. Shit. But said times in his rhymes because his memories we run into New York so you know okay guys so as you can see here this car has been taken apart and the reason for that was simple I was tracing an air mass system fault now as I said to you many people who've never had one of these cars wouldn't notice any different but bearing in mind I've got two of them and I've been doing this engine for a very very long time I know there was something not right with this car now I already knew what the fault could be because as I said, everything that had been done on this, this part, most garages can't get in. This the kind of part you have to order or get direct from BMW and the owner would have to be about a car. Secondly, garages just wouldn't think to check that because it's just not something that they think would actually cause a fault, which it actually does. Now this car, as I said, had rough running. It was stumbling all over the place. It felt down on power. The miles per gallon was absolutely extravagant. Um, we was getting like 14 miles per gallon sometimes to 20, which is not on, especially for a 130i, and it pointed to one problem. Now, obviously, I started stripping it because I had to. So if you can see here, I've also got the oil pressure sensor connector off. I've also got all the manifold bolts off as well. Reason for that is because we had a problem with these, which are the disc flaps. You can see I've removed it, and I've also removed the one under the manifold. Now, what they were doing is they wasn't shutting properly, which I'm gonna be showing you in a minute how they operate, and I'm gonna be showing you how you can make them actuate with a scan tool, and I'm gonna show you what these ones were doing and how I come to that diagnosis that they were completely gone. Now, they are responsible for being shut the moment your ignition is turned on. What will happen is the flaps will go open um, when you shut the engine off, but when you put the ignition into stage two, which is the lights on, the flaps will go fully closed, but not in this case. Both of these dissers, the flaps, were completely shot so they weren't closing so what was happening it was causing an air leak now i have actually removed them now what i'm going to go ahead and do is i'm going to show you how you can actually test them if you have this is on your car how to run a test now i'm going to be using a launch crater elite and then what i'm going to go ahead and do is plug the this is up and then i'm going to show you how you can actuate them using a launch crater elite on um, any of these bms just to be able to actuate the dissers because it has got the option in there and i'll show you what they were doing and how i knew they were actually gone Okay guys, so this is the disavow valve right here. If you can see, look how serious that play is in the flap itself. That has got a lot of play. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna connect this up so you guys can get to see what it's actually doing. So we'll connect that up and I'll just leave that on here so you guys get to see when I actuate it. 
what actually happens. Now I have using a launch creator elite and you're not gonna be able to see because I want you to watch the distant flap as well. We'll just load it all up and then what I'll do is I'll show you what this flap was doing. And this is how I managed to tell that these flaps weren't working. There's a certain thing you can do without actually taking them out to know they're not working. You can hear by the sound because there's meant to be um, a certain sound you should be listening for on these to know if they're good or bad, which is what I'll show you. Now you can see here, I am using a Launch Creator Elite, so I'm not lying about the scan tool I'm using. And you're gonna see that this scan tool can actuate everything. As I said, many of you guys always say to me, oh, it's the this, it's the that. But realistically, with a scan tool like this, there is no need for ISTA. This can do everything you're going to need to do using ISTA anyway. ISTA is purely for diagnostics and so is this. This one can code as well. For coding, you're going to need NCS Expert. So ISTA is really useless for that way. This one can do it all. This one can do everything that ISTA is going to do. The only thing ISTA is for is for dummies who can't um, actually be able to diagnose or need a plan to be able to diagnose the car. But if you understand each fault code on the car and how the car operates and how all the electronics work, you don't need ISTA. This is why I don't use it anymore because I have no need. Um, with a scanner like this, this is more than enough for what I need to be able to tell what I need to do and where to look for my faults. So let's go into actuation test on the DME. And if you can see here, we're going to a variable intake system and now we're gonna click to activate it. So what we're gonna go ahead and do right now is we're gonna activate the variable intake system. So you should see the flap and hear it now. You can see right there, it doesn't work. So if I push stop, you can see right there, that's how I knew this one was completely knackered because of this reason. The motor is sounding very weak, very broken. You can hear the flap isn't strong. Now, when these open and close, there should be a strong snap when the motor closes and opens it. It should not sound weak like that where the motor has gone very tired. And you can see there again, it does the same thing. It just hasn't got a strong snap to it where the flap is meant to close. And you can hear that inside the manifold itself without having to take them off. So if you hear that yours are very weak like that, that shows you that these dissers are no good and you need to replace them. It should be a very um, strong and loud clap when they actually um, shut. So that's a good sign that your disser valves are perfectly fine and functioning. And another reason you should be testing them is to make sure the flap and the pin are still on there because if your pin actually come off or your flap come off inside your manifold, for instance, by testing them, you'll be able to hear if the flap is actually closing or open. If the flap, you don't hear no flap at all, it means your flap and your pin has actually come off inside the manifold. Now, it wasn't just that one that's gone. We've also got the small one. So I'm just gonna take this out. We're just gonna get this one now. And yes, you can test the small one as well um, on the same plug. If I just do this, you can see there, that one isn't fully closing. Now these, these are flaps. The flap should be completely straight in line. And if you can see here, this one isn't closing fully where it should be, which is causing um, a non tight seal on the actual flap itself, which is obviously causing an air leak because these disser flaps are not closing completely and they're not working at all. Now, as I said to you, a lot of garages will not diagnose this one. A lot of garages um, you'll take your car to, don't understand BMW, won't even notice they're there, or they just will not believe that these can cause a rough idle, rough running, um, high fuel costs, uh, just everything on the car. And these are responsible for it all the time. A lot of people just do not seem to believe that. And the reason for that is, as I said, a lot of garages cannot get these in stock, especially in the UK. This is a BMW part or online part only, unfortunately. It's not the type of part you can just ring up and say you want a disser flap. It just doesn't work like that here. You can't order these at all. So a lot of people just uh, like forget it or garages will tell the customer it's not needed. It's not going to affect the run of it when it actually really does. It robs you of your fuel consumption. It robs you all the time. Now, the guy who actually owned this, Probably, as I said, wasn't any of the wiser and just didn't know it's at all, which wasn't his fault. He wasn't being expected. He just thought it was actually normal. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why he got rid of it, because it's probably costing him so much in fuel to run with these being that bad. But these are really, really bad. And obviously, I am waiting for two new ones to come. They're coming from Germany direct because I'm getting them direct from BMW, which are mild ones again. These are actually mild ones, uh, the two of them, but they are original BMW parts. And that's why... Um, they've been on the car, it's 141,000 miles now on this car. They're way overdue to be changed. These should have been changed a long time ago. And it's probably been like this, I would say for the last 15,000 miles, these would have failed. And that's why they have to be replaced. 
Um, I will be doing a video probably showing you guys how to reinstall them, um, especially the small ones. I know many of you guys want to see that. Everyone seems to think you've got to take the alternator off to reinstall the small one. That is not the case at all. You do not have to take the alternator off. You can do these very easily without taking the alternator off, just taking the manifold bolts off and putting your hand under and sticking it, which I'll show you it is possible and doable. So I will show you how to do that. But yes, guys, as you can see here, this is how you would test your disc flaps. I mean, it's up to you. You can take them out of the manifold and test them, or you can test them inside. But if you hear the motor very, very weak, it means they're completely gone. That is to be expected because as you, many of you guys know, the CCV pulls excess oil from the crankcase into the manifold. Oil probably gets in here somewhere through the seal into the motor and destroys the motor. I know many of you are gonna ask if it can be rebuilt. I'm not entirely sure if they can be, but for the price these days of how much they cost, it's not worth it. It's just better to buy new ones. You think if these are lasting 130, 140K on the car, you know, and the chances are they're gonna last, the next lot you're gonna buy is gonna last a lifetime of the car. But this just goes to show you guys, when people say they've done a lot of work on the car, um, not everything is as it seems because a lot of people do miss out a lot of stuff that actually still needs doing and you can see why bmw requires so much money as i've said to you i've replaced the solenoids i've replaced it now i'm going to replace the dissers replace the belts the things that people haven't done still and there's still a lot more obviously things that probably will need doing later on you know um and i expect it to be that way as well like i said the ignition coils ain't all been changed either that's another thing that needs to be done but obviously when people are taking these cars to garages it's a lot of money for someone to keep spending, 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 spending. That's why people end up getting rid of it because it constantly needs stuff because they're not doing it the whole lot in one go. They're doing it bit by bit. And with these cars, you just can't do it bit by bit um, to be able to drive them properly. You need to do it all in one go, get it over and done with and just enjoy the car fully. But that's it guys. That's how you diagnose failing disc flaps. And like I said, this flap has got way too much play in it. This one is jammed in the wrong position. It shouldn't be like that. And obviously, as you guys saw, I am using a Launch Crater Elite to be able to actuate these disc valves. So if you guys do want to go and purchase the scan tool, again, it will be in my description box below and in my comments box for you guys to go and check it out. As you guys see, I'm using it all the time in my videos. It's an excellent, excellent scan tool and I've not needed anything else since I've had this. And it's quite shocking, guys, when you think a hundred pound tool and I've not needed to touch any of these 2,000 pound ones, these expensive 1,000 pound ones. This 100 pound one's doing everything I need. It's just shocking, guys, absolutely shocking. Okay, guys, so as you've seen now, I've now shown you how to diagnose a failing disavow. Now, as I said to you, you do need a scan tool like this that can actually actuate them. If you have this, it will save you a lot of time and a lot of money because a lot of people do get this air mass system fault very, very wrong. A lot of people will misdiagnose it go pulling their valve cover off, changing their CCV hose, the fault code's still there, and they don't know how to diagnose it. And I mean, many people with that fault code will go changing their air mass sensor for no reason, or clean it, or this, or that. And that is not the fault code. The fault is for these disc flaps. As I said, if they do not seal properly and do not flap completely closed inside the manifold, that is gonna cause an air leak. The system will detect that, and what it will do is be dumping more fuel than that's actually needed. Now, another telltale sign that your disses are not closing properly is one of your exhaust pipes will be sootier than the other, and that's purely because, many of you guys know, oil goes into the intake manifold system and then it's burnt off. Now, if them disc flaps are not shutting completely, the oil isn't draining down completely and being burnt off in the combustion chamber properly. So then what's actually happening is the oil is actually just going through the manifold, the flaps are not closing, it's just going everywhere, and then that is how it ends up not being burnt properly because it's not adding the right amount of air and fuel mixture to burn off all that extra oil that's going into the manifold. So all it's actually doing is adding so much fuel to compensate for the loss of air. So you end up with a black soot, soot coming out of one of your exhaust pipes and that, would t that is a telltale sign that one of your disc flaps are not functioning properly. So do get yourself a scan tool like this, guys. And like I said, I will link this in my comment box below for many of you guys to go and check it out. Many of you guys know I really, really do like this scan tool. I've been using it day in, day out. And as I said to you, I've not needed to use anything else. I know many of you guys are gonna sit there saying that I'm trying to, I'm not though. You guys can see, I don't usually promote any scan tools. I do a video on them and that is it. But this one has been my go-to scan tool since, you know, I actually got it, I've not needed anything else. And like I said, it's not like here I'm trying to flog you 500, 1,000 pound scan tool. This is 100 pound and it can do everything I've ever needed it to do. You guys just saw I just actuated the disc flaps, you know, just with this scan tool and it can do so much more. Yes, it does your live data, yes, it's bi-directional. It can do everything. And many of you guys need a bi-directional scan tool, especially if you own a BMW for things like that. So thank you very much for watching guys and I hope this video will help you be able to diagnose 
your disc flaps or anything else on your car. As I said, this scan tool is really, really great for the price. And at the moment it is 120 pound on Amazon. So do go and buy it because it is a really, really must have scan tool, not just for your glove box, for everywhere, for garage, for home. It's the one scan tool that can basically do it all. So thank you very much for watching guys. BMW Dr. Dean here and goodbye.